Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahweh Shai, Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahweh Shai, Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakal Kadash. Lebanonis of the Apostles, to the elders of Great Mills, I want you well. I want to say salutations to the whole family elect out there, you Akim to Zadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity, right? Under Priest Shaman, um, this week's topic is going to be entitled, um, Let's Talk War. Um, we're going to deviate a bit from this coronavirus situation, the virus that the government is telling us to social distance ourselves from, but they didn't social distance themselves when they got together to pass these draconian laws and measures that we're going to discuss. Exodus 15 and 3 says, um, the Lord Yahweh Shem is a man of war, and the end all be all is a third world's war and a war between Yahweh Shai, who the world only calls Jesus Christ, and these different world powers that's going to be left standing after this thermonuclear destruction, right? So in the midst of this um, coronavirus situation, uh, the United States government was still issuing sanctions on their enemies, including Iran, which Iran is an enemy of Israel, and we already know the United States is a proxy army for the state of Israel, so-called Jews, and Venezuela. Elder Yahweh, he put together a video. I didn't get a chance to watch it, but in the thumbnail, they had a wanted poster with Nicolas Maduro, the current president, democratically elected president of Venezuela. By the way, the Venezuelans are Israelites as well of the northern kingdom of the nation of Israel. They're Israelites, right? And, you know, they want to oust President Maduro. And they wanted, they wanted Venezuela since Chavez supplanted them, right? Hugo Chavez made deal with certain uh, big-time investors and once he got what he needed out of them, he naturalized um, the nation's gas. You know, they want to privatize the gas, but he naturalized the gas and benefited the people of Venezuela, not private investors, right? And um, so they're trumping up a new charge against them. And this week's charge, this current charge, is um, drugs. And if that. And, and, you know, they're just getting desperate at this point, you know. I mean, they first started to say that the guy was starving his people and that people in Venezuela were suffering from famine and all these types of things. But, it, you know, it turned out that was false accusation. They just wanted to make this guy look like a demon and put in their own puppet leader, Juan Guaido, who, by the way, is a Freemason, right? Um, and a CIA asset. But um, prior to Vice President Mike Pence declaring this guy as the interim president of Venezuela, less than 3% of the population even knew about him in Venezuela. And in fact, these sanctions are starving more people than anything else. I mean, you know, they, they limited medicine supplies from getting in there. And one of the nation's number one resources which they want, which is their crude oil. Um, Venezuela has the largest reserve of crude oil. They want it. Um, and they'll do it any means um, to get it. They want regime change, you know. Um, the scripture says that he enlarges his desire as hell. So they want na uh, the natural resources, these so-called um, white people, Edomites, primarily the elites. Um, they want to control every single natural resource in the world. And they'll prey in, on whoever they could get it from. And what they use is sanctions. Sanctions is a modern day version of what you might see in the Bible as a siege, right? In, a, in siege warfare, you block off a city and you starve it out in hopes that if the leader doesn't surrender, the people will revolt, kill their leader, and surrender to the opposition, right? So they're doing the same thing now in the form of sanctions. And the sanctions are working. And it's, man, the Lord doesn't. The scriptures are so on point. It speaks about the house of Satan being divided and, and that it should fall because the UN and all these different nations were standing up against the United States for putting sanctions on Venezuela because Nicolas Maduro was democratically elected. And these are Edomites, right? These are Edomites going against other Edomites. In the midst of the coronavirus situation, you also had them trying to further the Patriot Act. And the Patriot Act was shut down not by, you know, Jakes, but by a lot of Edomites. Because you have a lot of Edomites that believe in the so-called 
American Constitution and an American freedom and liberties. So, you know, it's this New World Order thing is a bit more nuanced than all of them just coming together and agreeing together. You know, they do struggle between themselves. Well, that's a beautiful Blue Jay. They do struggle between themselves, these uh, Edomites, man. They do uh, vie for power. I mean, ultimately, they all want to enslave the world, but you have, like, a newer guard and an older guard, like they show you in Blade. Some some of them are like, let's wait. Some of them are like, no, let's ship these people now. So they don't you all agree on the same thing, but ultimately, the puppeteers, the Heavenly Father, how about Shin Yahweh Shai? And this is nothing new. This is nothing new. Um, prime example, the Federal Reserve Bank. They were trying to infiltrate the United States, and you had presidents that were Masons that were going against the uh, the Illuminati, so to speak. They were going against the British powers. They didn't want centralized banks. They wanted their own currency, right? So they were going against each other. It wasn't just like, you know, let's all do this thing on one accord. No, nah, they, they've been divided, and they still divided even unto this day, you know? So... Um, not every Freemason is a so-called Illuminati. You know, not that not that the Freemasons are anything righteous about them, but a lot of them, um, they really don't even know what the hell is going on at the very, very top because it's compart compartment uh, compartmentalized, right? Um, way back in the world in high school, one of my friend, his father was a Mason for like a number of years. I'm talking about, I think it was 13 years. And he was like, well, yeah, man, I mean, none of that stuff goes on. You know, you might bump into another mason, he'll let you off if you're getting a ticket. So a lot of them see it as like a fraternity lodge. And for the most part, that's how it, it kind of is on a lower base level. But when you get to the top, and that might take decades, then they start unveiling more and more uh, things to you. Because the whole thing about it is, can you keep a secret? They want to test you. You know, the scriptures say before you get a friend proven first. And the scriptures speak about how somebody could... Reveal your secrets and cause you to be a reproach, right? So, you know, just like any body would, before you tell somebody anything about yourself, you want to get to know the person, and that might take, you know, 10, 20 years before you kind of even tell somebody about something about yourself, you know? So the same thing that works in that um, order. So they're divided, man. They're divided. Even this war situation concerning Venezuela, Mike Pompeo is saying one thing, and the defense secretary is saying another thing. One is saying that they'll never have Maduro be the president, and one is saying, look, we might let him run. So the angles are changing up. Now they're using drug trafficking, which is crazy because um, Colombia, I believe, is number one in exporting cocaine, and the United States is the first to receive it. And they work hand in hand with the CIA, right? Because, um, you see, there's no way you could bring in aircrafts loaded with cocaine into the United States without the United States not knowing about it, you know? 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, we're not ignorant, ignorant of Satan's devices. And this man's word is smoother than butter. So when they tell you things like, yeah, we have the FDA to fight drug, uh, fight drugs, um, really, when they bring the FDA into your um, country, they're really trying to prop up drugs. They're trying to prop up cartels. This guy uh, was privy to it, um, Evo Morales. He didn't want the FDA in this country. Um, they ended up um, taking him out once they found out Bolivia had one of the largest lithium supplies in the world. They ended up taking him out. You know, Look what they did to Mexico. They destroyed Mexico. right? They had projects such as um, Fast and Furious, which armed the cartels. And all that does is cause destabilization. So certain of these Latin American countries are privy to it. Some of them have been um, usurped and go along with the U.S. agenda, like Chile and, and, and others, right? So this is another tactic they're trying to use to, um, again, siege, put a siege on Venezuela, because the Venezuelan people, they want a democratically elected leader, but some of them is just like, damn, how much suffering can we take? Like, just fuck it, just do what you gotta do. And that's the point of, this is how warfares are being done now. You know, this is how warfares are, doing, are being done now, because the so-called white man they're very, they're elite, they, they, these elites come together with think tanks, so they're not stupid. They're not idiots. They, you know, this is a CIA maneuver that they've been doing. Psychological warfare. They study these things. And the Mosai is fueling these things in their mind to serve a greater agenda. And that greater agenda is a third world's war, right? Because if you hurt Venezuela, who's allied to Venezuela? Russia, right? 
all these nations are playing a part in this coming third world's war. And this is prophetic. This is something that the Bible speaks about. This is something that's being unfolded in front of our very eyes that um, um, somebody that's a scoffer can't gainsay, right? What else is happening geopolitically in the, in the world of war? Iran. Um, right now, the United States has a few troops just sitting in Saudi Arabia waiting, waiting for an excuse to go to Iran. This guy, Mike Pompeo, is dying to get in Iran, you know, and they, this coronavirus was a perfect cover-up to increase the sanctions, all right, um, allocate more troops into Iraq to try to egg um, the people of Iran on. They want this guy out of there, again, at the behest of the, at the, at the behest of the nation of Israel, man, you know, so there's different geopolitical war tensions that are happening all throughout the world, and, um, you know, the coronavirus, the most one of the most convenient viruses in history in terms of being a catalyst to all these agendas that these elites people got uh, going on um fit perfectly it, it landed perfectly in the times that we in man you know it landed perfectly in the times that we in so um they got a they got a warrant out <laughs> it's just crazy they got a warrant um a couple million dollars on Nicolas Maduro's head and it's crazy because Maduro said, look, I'm willing to work with the opposition, just not Juan Guaido, right? So if, if, if that was the case, right, if the guy is saying, look, I'm, re I'm willing to open, to, I'm open to re-elections, I'm, I'm open to working with the oppositions, and these guys are still not saying no, which is crazy because, you know, here it is, you have a country that voted for their leader, but the United States has the power to tell them who's going to be their leader. If that's not a new world order concept, I don't know what is, man, you know? There's one superpower telling another superpower, look, this is you know, this is gonna be your leader. Again, this is all throughout the Bible when you hear words like vassal, right? We had that in our history. But we had a vassal when the Babylonians propped up a vassal over our people. It was one of our people, one of the kings. Um it was uh Zedekiah was one of them. Zedekiah, the last king of Judah, was a vassal. For the Babylonians, he ultimately um, tried to revolt and disobeyed the words of Jeremiah. And that's what, you know, stream of events led us to where we are now. You know, get, get being captive in Babylon and his all prophecy at the end of the day. But these tactics were not, are nothing new. You know, putting in puppet um, rulers or vassals is a tactic that goes way back, man. Except back in the ancient world, men were more outright. Men were more straightforward. You know, you didn't have to sugarcoat shit and pass all these types of thousand-page bills in the middle of the night and giving people one day to vote on it to, to do what you wanted to do. You know, you sort of just did it back then, you know. But the Mosai is, again, working on the minds on the kings of the earth um, to play these chess games, but not forever. You know, this this is not going to go on forever. You know, the Mosai is is going to have them ultimately go to this war, you know, and the Mosai is um, also increasing their technology um, to make them further destroy themselves. He that dig at that pit is going to fall therein. So they, um, the scriptures speak about them sharpening that sword so as they get more technologically advanced, whether it be nuclear missiles or um, low-level fighters, ground fighters, it's a great to destroy themselves. Right now, there's a competition between um, uh, these different war companies. Um, I believe it's Bell and um, Lockheed Martin got a contract with another company, but they're trying to create this new helicopter. And this new helicopter is on a whole, this is on another level, man. It's able to deploy drones. And speaking with one of the military contact, the guy that, you know, he's the guy that told me, like, look, man, the United States been had hypersonic missiles even though right now they're just coming out saying that they're just not working on it they had it for a long time don't get it twisted russia and china are way behind the united states because this is the this is the this is the nation that the most i got to be um the largest military you know the iron teeth they got it even though nuclear warfare uh, levels the playing field right now technically speaking the united states makes up 64 percent of the world's army so they got a very powerful mil military that's how come they're able to be cut to do the type of shit that they do to these other nations which ultimately is going to lead to their downfall man you know a lot of nations are going to have to turn on the united states because the united states use these nations for their purpose sell them old ass weapons 
and could turn on them at any minute. The prime example I could give is uh, Iraq. In 1985, Saddam Hussein had the keys to Detroit. A few years later, he had weapons of mass destruction. So you have the power of the media and you can manipulate and you can prop up and you know stage phony terrorist attacks and make a new enemy and all these types of shit, all these types of shit. Really, when, they, when the United States come to form a covenant with you, you should know that this man is going to come with wars that are smoother than butter, but war is in his heart, right? And the nations are waking up to that. The nations are waking up to that. They're making secret deals, backdoor deals with one another, and that's all the most high um, working, you know? Speaking about um, the military advancement, um, I got more information because I, I spoke, the guy I was speaking to, you know, I, I told him about um, the Boeing Windman the wingman drone project which pretty much is um it's a project that um that boeing is selling to australia right now where it's a military pilot and he's surrounded by drones right he's surrounded by drones they fly with him they have the, he has the ability to tell them to go forward and this that and the third so we got to talk and and i love when we get into these talks because i'm always interested into what the hell that you know these devils are working on and when i mentioned it to him mind you if you look this boeing wingman project up you know, they'll tell you that it's in um, finishing stage of development. They got some of them out. When I told them about them, he said that's 50, that concept is 15 years old. So that kind of gives you an idea of the type of shit that ESO does. You'll have shit way in advance than you would even think of. Have it ready and then just release information like, oh, we're just now working on it. And sure enough, he was right. He said the same thing about the Reaper drone. You know, it was already in the field. And two years later, they just released it, you know. But well, um, as we were speaking about that, he told me another thing. Right? He said um, what they want to work on, um, because the, the problem with drones is pro drones can't carry heavy, arti heavy artillery, right? They, mo they mainly do air-to-ground missiles, right? They don't even have air-to-air -air missiles. It's too heavy. Um, but what they want to work on is, um, what was the word he used? Um, they want to work on dogfighter drones. They want to work on drones that are able to dogfight. Meaning, right now, drones can't dogfight. You know, but if, if you have if somebody, if a man is piloting, like, let's say, the an enemy of America, like China or Russia is piloting a fighter jet, they'll take out drones because drones can't dogfight, right? So what they want to work on, this is the plans that he told me, is they want to work on dogfighter drones. And ultimately, their goal is to have the pilot, like me, let's say I'm, say I'm a pilot, I'm piloting the car, I'm piloting my car, but it's like um, it's like screens all around me, and it'll almost be like VR, like like virtually piloting a plane, but I'm not actually in the plane. And that's some of the shit that they're working on. I'm not saying that's going to come to pass, you know. I'm not saying that's going to come to pass, but that's some of the shit that they that they said they're working on. And normally, when they say they're working on it, that means it's either old or they already have it. So similar to that movie, um. That movie they had, uh, oh, man, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy, and you had that one race of people and that they got into these crafts, they got into these like stationary piloting vehicles, and they got in and they turned it on, and remotely they were piloting fucking spaceships, they were piloting spaceships, but they were in a stationary area. And, um, again, just like that lesson, the spirit, um, had me do, uh, called, um, like you see in that movie, when they show you things in the movies, either things they already have working on or, you know, have in the works, will the most I let them get that far in creating something like that? I don't, I, you know, that's, that's up for speculation. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the most I have, have them already have it. But that's some of the shit that they got, man. That's some of the shit that they got. So this coming world's war, um, man, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a sight to see. And we we pray, pray for brothers, pray for ourselves, pray for the first and foremost the apostles, the elders. That look, man, we seeing all this shit go down from a bird's eye view because the destruction that the Most High got in store for this place, man, it's gonna be again, it's gonna it's gonna top the destruction. It's gonna top all destruction previous it's going to be something that's going to be talked on in the memory something that's going to be that's something that's going to be recorded in the 
you know, that we're going to be um, reading and talk about in the kingdom of heaven. So, hey, man, there's a lot of shit going on right now. But in the backdrop of the fear mongering still going on in the U.S. media, there's a lot of war tension prophecies that are still being moved forward. So we still, you know, to the spirit still, got, you know, bringing that stuff out too. With that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, 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 Yahweh,